century, the world is heavily dependent on machines. This call is now being recorded. More precisely, the human civilization is getting more and more dependent on electronic products. Our lifestyles have changed drastically. From one point of view, the world of electronic products is a boon for mankind. On the other hand, the adverse effects of the same has already been a serious issue. The matter of concern is the rapid generation of e-wastes all across the globe. Today in this webinar, we will go through the different aspects of e-waste with, with Shondipan Boshu, Assistant Professor of Computer Science of Government General Degree College, Shindu. I welcome all in this webinar. Thank you. Now I like to request uh, Dr. Choitali Choudhury, the coordinator of IQAC Government General Degree College. She also the head of the Department of History and she constantly support us to uh, organize such type of uh, lecture series as well as the different type of uh, webinar. I request Dr. Choudhury to say something. Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Uh, good morning, respected principal, sir, faculty members, and participants. On behalf of ITUSC, Government General Degree College, Shingur, I welcome you all to this first online lecture series organized by Department of Computer Science. Today our speaker is Professor Shondipan Boshu, Assistant Professor and Head of the Department of Computer Science, Government General Degree College, Shingur. He will deliver a lecture on US rise of machines. I welcome you Shondipan and thank you for giving a lecture on this very important topic. We know that with the rapid expansion of technology and the development of electronic products, the creation of large amount of EOS is becoming a major problem, a threat to our environment. Therefore, the need of proper EOS management is necessary. Our speaker will discuss all this today in his lecture. Thank you, Computer Science Department, for organizing such important webinar. Thank you all. Now, I would like to uh, request Mr. Shondipan Basu, Assistant Professor of uh, Computer Science, Government General Degree College, Singur, and uh, as well as the head of the department of Computer Science Department to present his lecture, today's lecture. I think uh, all of the participants will uh, learn a lot from this lecture and, uh, and they will maintain uh, the US management properly that the environment can be secured and from the US. And uh, I also like to request all the participants during the uh, lecture series or during this uh, online lecture series, you are requested to not to unmute yourself as well as not to start your video or presentation. Thank you to all of you again. Now, I like to request Mr. Basu to say, deliver his lecture. Thank you, Shomitda. Uh, thank you, Principal Sir. Thank you, Choitali Madam, uh, for their continuous support. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. OK, OK, thank you. So uh, I hope uh, all of you can see the front slide, the first slide. Uh, I think one minute.
just wait a minute there's a technical glitch Okay, now, uh, so I hope uh, the front slide is uh, viewable. Yes, yes, it is so uh, visible. Yeah, visible it is. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, first of all, I would request all the participants, those who are using their mobile phones, uh, they can turn it uh, in the horizontal mode so that the slides can be viewable more easily. Uh, so the topic is uh, e-waste. Uh, I hope uh, many of us have already heard about the term e-waste. Actually, e-waste stands for electronic waste. Mm. Now, first of all, what is waste? Waste is something we can define we can say that uh, anything uh, which we cannot use anymore which uh, is not uh, in use for us although the term waste is very relative something uh, that is uh, not for use for myself may be useful for some other people okay so that's why we uh, uh, we we can buy we generally buy the second hand uh, items so so the owner so uh, they thought that um, we will not use it it is not usable for me and uh, they sell it and some other people they buy it for further usage so um, If we go uh, to look the different type of wastes that are available, um, that are there in our surroundings, uh, we can see different type of waste. Uh, I'm not going into the rigid classification or of the different type of waste uh, and all these. So some of the uh, different types of waste we can see uh, or we see in our daily life uh, are these solid waste, chemical waste, hazardous waste, radioactive waste, municipal waste, biomedical waste, etc., etc. And probably the e-waste, that is electronic waste, is probably the youngest member uh, among all of these. So it's time to think with uh, think about the US uh, how we should deal with it uh, first of all we have to know uh, uh, how it is being generated and uh, how we can control it and uh, how we can manage it afterwards so uh, Day by day, our consumption uh, is increasing. Our consumption in the field of electronic devices and uh, the gadgets, these different appliances, peripherals, uh, we are, uh, our consumption is increasing. So we can say uh, around uh, say 15 or 20 years ago, uh, how many appliances or electronic devices are there at our home? Uh, hardly few, but uh, nowadays um, it's almost countless. 
uh, every now and then uh, we are um, tend to buy different electronic gadgets and uh, devices uh, obviously these devices they make our life very smooth easy comfortable uh, so and also somehow uh, uh, we we um, unintentionally uh, become slave of these devices uh, they have become the master of our life without these devices we cannot move cannot uh, think uh, of our day so this greed this greed and the need uh, is almost gone we we forget the difference between the need and the greed and uh, as rightly said uh, by mahatma gandhi that the world has enough for everyone's need but not enough for everyone's greed so phir bhi kya kare ye dil mange more more and more and especially uh, today uh, in today's life uh, all the e-commerce websites like um, amazon flipkart or whatever it may be uh, and uh, the different uh, advertisements the, these apps they push ourselves to buy more and more so it's hard to control our nature of consume especially consume consumption of electronic products so um, that's fine we are we we have the money or uh, we have the greed we are uh, willing to buy and uh, we are using it uh, our life is comfortable and uh, fine everything is going fine and um, that's okay but uh, next uh, what is the problem one of the first problems is that the more we use these electronic devices the more and more we use these electronic devices the more and more electricity we consume okay so uh, if i have only one mobile phone um, and uh, say uh, one uh, laptop so the amount of electricity consumed by these two devices uh, are less than if now i i would buy uh, a tab or uh, some other uh, gadgets and etc so the more we consume electronic devices the more we use electronic devices the more electricity is needed so uh, some figures are there uh, it's pretty old uh, with respect to current time uh, it uh, it is taken from us environmental protection agency from their website that according to them uh, in the year of 2014 uh, around 6870 million metric tons of carbon dioxide or equivalent gases are produced and we can see from both of these pie charts uh, one in the left and one in the right that uh, the total greenhouse gas emission only by us not this is not for the world only by united states uh, is 30% uh, in from the field of electricity uh, green has greenhouse gas produced and uh, similarly the carbon footprint was enormous so obviously it's a matter of concern now this is these are some pictures which you may not be familiar with uh, so again we are we are talking about uh, the consumption of electronic devices the huge consumption of electronic devices so what happens when uh, we throw it what happens we it is uh, no longer there for use so ultimately uh, what is called landfill 
this all us or most of the us uh, they occupy this places uh, they, they are called landfills and the figure uh, there in the below that again it's uh, it's a uh, bit old data uh, that in the year of 2014 worldwide 41.8 million tons of e waste generated so i hope you can imagine the amount 41.8 million tons e waste in a single year and obviously each year with each year this amount is increasing and increasing and increasing because obviously with each year our consumption of electronic products are also increasing so obviously the waste will also increase so uh, the next uh, the ava figure is uh, you probably all of you are familiar with this this is a periodic table uh, we um, all have come through this picture uh, and in the below there is a, a data and uh, that uh, it's also pretty old in the year of 2013 uh, that's some 174 million mobile phones 174 million mobile phones were shipped in western europe during uh, the year 2013 and uh, you will be surprised to know that all these mobile phones only mobile phones nothing else all these mobile phones contain different metals all these mobile phone contains different metals uh, as as within there cobalt gold palladium silver copper and these different metals so this is the case and this is the real danger uh, of our society for our environment for our world because after an electronic product becomes a waste so what generally you do you sell it to the bikriola kabadiola etc etc so how many of we are interested to know what they actually do it, do with it after uh, getting that product it may be some old television monitor ups anything so what they uh, do with it so this is called the informal sector so what they do or they uh, again um, sell it to these people who are running this business this is illegal you can show you can see that uh, these pictures are showing that what these people are trying to do is to extract the components extract the metals from these devices in an unscientific manner they are burning it and extracting that metal this is highly highly unhygienic they, they are burning it so this has been the case all over the world if you google it you will get to know more about it this is this has been the case all over the world in china in taiwan in india in whatever place uh, i would um, i would name you uh, college street uh, uh, in kolkata uh, all of you uh, must have know the place uh, in college street there is also a uh, place yeah, it's 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 like a uh, go down or garage uh, which is being used for this purpose it's right in front in the middle of our city kolkata so it's it's uh, very unhygienic this is the real picture so 
what they do is uh, they are trying to dismantle that device uh you know trying to get out all the metals and these things so all these electronic devices that we are using in our daily life all these electronic devices they contain more or less these uh, elements and what is the speciality of, with these elements that uh, if they are not handled properly if they are not dismantled properly they are very much um, dangerous for human health for example you can see that the table the uh, elements lead beryllium arsenic mercury antimony cadmium all these and other metals also other elements also are there in uh, our different electronic devices and what happened uh, is with all this informal sector of recycling okay this uh, this labors the cheap cheap labors uh, they get very uh, low amount of money uh, so they are being affected by this element again um, i should say if you uh, google it you can see that um, uh, this cadmium or lead they are uh, they are in the blood in their blood in those in these people since uh, they are uh, doing it for some money and unknowingly or knowingly all these elements they uh, these elements are uh, have been entering in their body in their lungs in their blood and slowly uh, they have uh, make a huge uh, impact on their health so i think uh, many of these are carcinogenic even so we all have to be uh, careful about that so before selling it to some informal sector that is some bicriola or something like that uh, we must think twice so this is the adverse effect of informal way of recycling us so the effect is not limited to some particular section of people okay so the air is being polluted the water is being polluted the soil is being polluted okay this uh, i have shown the landfill picture so obviously the soil is being polluted and you can see in this picture that uh this animals they are eating this garbage and um, all maybe that electronic waste uh, which is full of maybe cadmium um, not full of uh, is uh, cadmium as their component and arsenic it's all going into their body and eventually uh, obviously uh, we cannot get rid of this situation because it is affecting the entire environment with air pollution with water pollution with soil pollution and this thing so uh, we have seen till now that what is the us uh, and uh, what are the different problems so uh, obviously we want some solutions so as a part of the solutions first look who are the key players who are the stakeholders um, um, that matter most uh, one of them is go the government because they are the policy maker they are the rule makers and uh, they can uh, decide uh, what to do or what not to do etc etc next the producers or the manufacturers of these e products okay so all the companies all these big big companies or the small companies that are producing these e products they have to be careful they have a huge role to role to play and finally 
we the consumers uh, have a big big role to play uh, in the management of e waste so the as shown in the figure the primary three activities that we can do is reduce reuse and recycle uh, i think many of you or all of you know these terms but the way uh, the other types of waste and their adverse effect like plastic pollution and all these are being discussed in our society are being highlighted in different uh, events um, discussed in different seminars hardly uh, the us uh, uh, is there for any 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 kind of discussion close to this other kind of um, pollution types so it's the time has come to be serious with the us and especially after this pandemic situation where uh, after which the consumption of electronic products has drastically increased uh, without any doubt so uh, we have to be uh, look uh, we are very much eager we are very much uh, curious uh, that uh, uh, what the new gadget is going to launch is going to be launched uh, the new phone or, the, or some new tab or laptop or maybe some other gadgets uh, some wrist watch a smart watch etc etc we are very much eager we are very much curious about these things but uh, uh, in the opposite side we are very much unwilling uh, reluctant not reluctant to uh, know or to act what to do when it is of no use how to deal when this uh, product is of no use and um, uh, it's the time has come so that uh, we will have a better future so i go to the next slide uh, the first thing is reduce obviously uh, i um, keep it as the first point because the less we consume the less uh, waste will be generated this is a simple equation so uh, another thing i included in this slide that reduce and replace so first of all uh, i'd say something about the reduce uh that is uh, in these pictures you would see that uh, in our daily life almost all of us we use batteries uh whether it may be some uh, wall clock or some any 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 other uh, electronic remote control uh, uh, appliances devices uh, so uh, instead of using the regular uh, normal battery we can use rechargeable battery because each time we use this uh, easily normal uh, battery uh, after their end life we throw it we throw it in the garbage very easily and um, that is very very harmful uh, because that garbage is being dumped Uh, somewhere where other types of garbage is are there also so there is uh, hardly any way to segregate between this say municipal waste um, like the uh, vegetable pills and these batteries so in that case we can use these rechargeable batteries uh, which we can uh, uh, recharge again and again uh, so we obvi and also uh we can save the cost we uh, don't need to buy the battery second and again and some other pictures are also there it's um, that uh, i'd go through quickly that uh, it's better to use these pen drives on flash memories memory cards instead of using cds dvds because these cds dvds are uh, they get damaged very easily so as soon as a cd or dvd gets damaged 
you just simply throw it because there is no way you can recover the data uh, stored there in a CD DVD if it gets damaged. You just simply throw it. Okay. So, but this is not the case for pen drive or memory card, and also, again, uh, one important thing is uh, that uh, many of these devices we use, they come with a wire. Uh, th that is pa the power cable or some data cable, etc. So what happens, uh, suppose a simple example, I'd like to give that uh, in a computer, in a desktop computer, we all use a keyboard. Uh, a wire uh, is connected to the keyboard and the other end goes to the CPU or the cabinet of the computer. So uh, let's... Uh, Imagine a situation that somehow uh, you are using it for a while and uh, somehow that wire gets damaged with some reason. Okay, so what would you do? You do not have any option to go to the shop and tell the shopkeeper, give me a wire which I can replace in the keyboard. What you have to do, you have to reject or uh, throw the keyboard away. There is no way you can uh, just uh, change that wire only. Same as with the mouse. If somehow the wire gets damaged of the mouse, uh, you do not have any option to change it. So sometimes uh, it's better to go wireless. At least uh, you can get rid of these kinds of situation. So um, the chances of damages may be less. So uh, this is there. And uh, again, it's better to use this LCD and LED monitor than the old CRT monitors, the big one, because this, uh, there are two points that these big CRT monitors, they consume more and more, more power than this uh, LED and LCD monitor. Uh, but also this, Big CRT monitors, they, uh, there are many different uh, this, uh, metals, these uh, elements that we have seen in this periodic table. So many uh, these components are needed to make this big CRT. Okay, so, so it's better to use these monitors. Next, reuse. So uh, we have seen that uh, reduce uh, is the first priority, according to myself. Obviously, the as I mentioned earlier, that the less we use, the less waste we generate. Next, reuse that uh, whenever we think that, yes, my mobile phone is getting old. Uh, uh, rather, my mindset is uh, wanting to buy a new mobile phone. Uh, so uh, we say um, we, we want to uh, throw it away. So instead of throw it away or uh, put it in the garbage, uh, you can resell it. There are different uh, online websites where you can sell your product. Uh, and if it gets damaged, first of all, you try to repair it. Obviously not by yourself, by some expert. Uh, instead of uh, going to buy a new product. Again, uh, we can donate it to different charitable institutions, to different NGOs, uh, to some poor people. Uh, so all these activities, uh, all these actions can be done instead of throwing those e-products in the garbage. So this is an interesting slide um, that is, uh, I took it from World Economic Forum. Uh, they say that how much US do we generate every year? That is uh, this one of the latest figures. 
uh, that is 44.7 million tons of EU waste a year. Now that amount, 44.7 million tons, is equivalent to uh, they say 1,25,000 jumbo jets. That amount of EOS is equivalent to these numbers of jumbo jets. So you can imagine uh, the amount of EOS globally generated every year. And again, they say uh, that uh, if we uh, compare it, so this amount of EOS is equivalent to almost 4,500 Eiffel Towers. So you can imagine the amount of EOS. And obviously, this, as I said earlier, that uh, this amount is going to increase day by day, year by year, uh, because our consumption is increasing. So uh, the thing we can do is uh, it's hard to restrict ourselves uh, to use these products. Okay, uh, to um, uh, get rid of these products that will not use mobile phones and laptops and these things, uh, Xerox machines and all these things. But uh, what we need to do is to be careful, be aware of this uh, EOS, that it's not going to harm our life, our uh, animal world, our environment anymore. So the most important uh, action is with the U.S. is to recycle. So as I have shown earlier that uh, those uh, recycling processes informal, unscientific, unhygienic. Okay, uh, they are illegal in one sense. So the um, authorized uh, version is that uh, there are some authorized uh, companies, organizations. They collect your EOS from uh, your place and uh, they have that license. Uh, they can do it with proper uh, rules and regulations. They are authorized uh, dealers of this us so some figures are there uh, till may 2019 uh, there are around 312 authorized us dismantler recyclers in india so you may see uh, that it may seem that this 312 is a big number but the amount of us that is being generated by india every year um, is huge and this 312 is very very less to that number the main problem is uh, well the government has some role to play obviously uh, the manufacturers or the producers they also need to play a big role but it's finally the consumers who are actually dealing with the fact, who are actually uh, treating that um, EOS, uh, whether I should, uh, I should be careful about it or I should just throw it uh, in the garbage with other waste. So these are the two big questions or the uh, two big factors. Uh, that why we should recycle e waste. The first point I'd like to mention is, uh, as you can obviously understand, that all these electronic products are being made by these different metals, materials available. And all these are natural resources, of course. So the more and more e products we consume, the more and more these resources are being extracted, are being mined from Mother Nature. So as a result, slowly, these resources, obviously these resources are limited resources. 
this is not infinite like fossil fuel all these resources are also uh, limited resources so if we cannot control the consumption rate so there will be a bleak future so as i uh, mentioned the earth natural resources are limited and hence we make sure that we preserve them and use them carefully of course we have to preserve them for our future generation to use uh, next obviously to eliminate landfill we obviously do not want to uh, landfill with this uh, landfill with this e waste and uh, as we also to save mother earth by preventing air pollution water and soil pollution now the next is the benefits of us recycle what are the benefits first is economic benefits revenue generation from recovered materials uh, again i would say if you google it uh, you can see the different uh, the different companies that are available and different organizations that are there in uh, our country they are making a good revenue they are doing a good business uh, with us recycling but the main thing is uh, still um, this field is um, uh, is very much unknown to many of the people uh, in fact uh, i'll come to it later uh, okay uh, next uh, environmental benefits natural resource conservation and reduction in environmental pollution and one of the biggest benefits is employment generation uh, a huge number of employment generation is there for this us recycling and you can guarantee that uh, this employment generation would never end because uh, obviously uh, the consumption will increase and increase okay so it's not that we all are going to uh, stop using these electronic devices at some day rather th this would go increase so as it would go increase so the amount of us uh, will increase so uh, there will be hopefully more and more organizations for us dismantling and recycling so uh, and let us look at some rules or regulations or laws uh, that are there uh, um, it would surprise uh, you that uh, the first rule regarding uh, management and handling us in india that came in 2011 and affected from 2012 in the month of may so it just uh say, um eight and nine years ago um the matter the the law is passed again uh, that is amended in the year of 2016 and finally it is amended in 2018 so this amendment actually uh, gives a bit power to the central pollution control bureau board to randomly check uh, this any electronic product whether that is following the compliance rules and all that and over worldwide globally uh, basel convention is there you might have heard about this uh, it took place uh, quite long ago uh, it is mainly uh, an agreement uh, regarding what is used to happen that all the developed countries they used to transfer their us to the underdeveloped or developing nations so that has been a serious issue actually uh, a long time back uh, it happened that uh, italy uh, the nation italy uh, they are dumping uh, their us in uh, nigeria and uh, obviously uh in that place the land the soil and the water uh, gets polluted in 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 a drastic manner so uh, all after all this kind of events uh, this convention uh, came and um, there is an agreement that um, this uh, uh, there will be to there will be some restrictions in the movements of this hazardous waste uh from developed country to less developed country and so on you can go through um, this and you can google it and the number of nations involved in this 
agreement this for 187 now uh, as uh, i was mentioning that we have to be concerned about uh, ourselves our actions our duties that we can take we can follow to to be aware of this kind of harmful situations that many times it happens we buy some electronic gadgets or products and uh, if you if you clo uh, look closely that almost each and every electronic product they come with an instruction manual okay so that is being provided you go through it and you will get to know how to use that product how to use that device so many times it happen uh, we are very much confident to uh, and we, we ignore or we rather throw the instruction manual of that product and we start to use it and sometimes uh, without lack of proper knowledge the product gets damaged and that, that is of no use so uh, obviously we uh, try to uh, be aware of this kind of uh, nonsense activities uh, by ourselves. So uh, before using any product, uh, please go through the instruction manual provided by it. If it is not being provided, you can go through the website of that product of that company, how to use it, what to do with it, and what not to do with it. It uh, generally it's uh, clearly written there. Uh, again, uh, uh, another picture shows that extended warranty. So this is uh, many times it happens that uh, we buy a product and it covers say one year or two year warranty. And, um, and also there is a facility that uh, you uh, give say rupees 500 or 1000 or some uh, amount and uh, you can get the extended warranty period same for another one year or two year. So many times we think, uh, okay, okay, we do not need that extended warranty uh, while we are going to spend uh, extra that amount. And by doing that, uh, what we actually uh, do act uh, the, uh, with spending that little amount and having that extended warranty, uh, warranty facility, uh, we can enjoy this uh, because uh, you know that a product and electronic product uh, there is no warranty that um, uh, it um, how long it will run uh, how long it will give the proper service okay so it's better to avail that extended warranty if there is any with the product uh, so obviously then you will have less uh, headache uh, in the future uh, if it gets damaged within that warranty period. Next, uh, handle with care. Uh, obviously, we need to handle uh, all these electronic products very carefully. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, uh, it, it may seem that, it's, uh, yeah, we are handling it carefully all the time. There is uh, no great deal with it. But uh, the poor thing is uh, as if 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 the device is um, mine okay it's my mobile my computer my laptop okay, i am taking the best possible care that i can take but as soon as uh, we use some these electronic products in our schools colleges universities in our workplaces offices intentionally or unintentionally there is a huge lack to maintain that product to use that product in a good manner with proper care we 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 are very much reluctant to have this kind of care i'm not saying that all of we but many of us uh, it's being seen uh, it's being it, you may ask yourself uh, am i uh, do I take that much care of these products when I use it in the schools, colleges, or offices? Uh, that I uh, that the same amount of care I take at my home with this with my personal devices. So what happens uh, with the lack of 
proper uh, care and maintenance, uh, the devices get dam uh, gam damaged in your offices, or schools, or colleges, and you have no headache. You go to the authority, you tell your boss, said this device is not working I, uh, and I cannot do uh, my work. Okay, so another new device is being assigned to you. And obviously that is uh, another budget is being allocated and that is uh, there within say few days. And again, we are uh, you are using it happily, but the poor thing, again, slowly and slowly you, uh, tend to have lack of care and um, proper interest with that device to maintain it, to protect it, and so on. Uh, again, uh, awareness campaign, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we have um, different types of pollutions, uh, environment, environmental, uh, issues around us. Uh, we are having different seminars, webinars, and all these talks, uh, but hardly uh, we uh, come across this kind of EOS related matter. And um, so uh, we should uh, arrange this kind of awareness campaign uh, and all that. And obviously, more research is needed uh, in this field. Uh, how to use less harmful uh, materials in these e products uh, and so on. Some uh, personal endeavors uh, I used to uh, contact the, author the different authorities uh, over email and uh, suggest some uh, suggest few things to take. Uh, proper measure against this EOS as it has been neglected uh, till now. So this is a picture uh, of import export that is, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, the developed countries, the developed nations are used to, um, you know, um, send this EOS uh, to other underdeveloped and and developing nations uh, so they can get rid of this thing because recycling those e-products at their own country is very costly okay and obviously um, they they want to get rid of this again this picture is uh, taken from world economic forum uh, it's showing uh, a very good picture that below you can see uh, it is there the top five highest and lowest EOS generating nations. So you'd surprise that um, a level is there uh, that is EOS generated uh, kilogram per capita. This is the data uh, they gathered in, in the year of 2016. Uh, 2016, in the year of 2016, that is EOS uh, in kilogram that is being generated per capita. That is Norway, Switzerland, Iceland, Denmark, UK. They are the top five nations uh, according to themselves in the year of 2016. And the lowest US generating nations are uh, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Afghanistan, Uganda, and Nepal. And in the above, uh, the world map is being divided into two colors. Uh, the green ones, uh, as you can see in the top right corner, that region sending U.S. The green, the green ones are the regions. They are sending the U.S. And the, the brown ones are the regions. Uh, they are receiving the U.S. So this is the channel of U.S. flow throughout the globe. Um, uh, obviously, it's it's uh, somehow illegal or legal. It depends on the nation's policy. And uh, this is a future forecast that uh, uh, how much devices we are going to use. Um, uh, I think many of you do not have any uh, or less idea um, uh, about the 
the number of devices uh, the approximate number of devices we are using currently so you can see in the year of 2020 that is globally the amount of uh, devices the number of devices we are, we are using is 25 to 50 billion connected devices so i hope you know 1 billion is 100 crore so 25 to 50 billion devices are being used globally and as you can see as the year progresses the number increases sharply uh, so obviously the uh, us generation will be huge and this is an interesting fact uh, that uh, what we can uh, do with this us to this uh, uh, authorized way of dismantling us recycling process that tokyo the japan uh, showed us uh, the tokyo olympic that is going to be held probably the next year uh, so what they used that um, we all know that uh, the winners of different events in the olympic they get uh, different medals medals that is uh, made of gold silver and bronze etc so they collected a huge amount of enormous amount of electronic devices throughout the country probably maybe outside of the country uh, uh, and the figure is above shown uh, and it is being taken from their uh, tokyo uh, media reports that total of 47488 tons of uh, us are being collected um, and 5.1 million mobile phones uh are collected and all these and the number of medal medals they uh, produced is 5000 so in the below you can see the uh, target and the medal they collected so by this uh, fact by this figure we all can see how the us uh, can be utilized uh can be uh, if it is uh, recycled pro properly then how we can utilize it uh, we can um, we can save a huge cost we can uh, generate a good employment so some uh, ray of hope we can say uh, these are some latest news that uh, uh, some uh, uh, us recycling right recycling plant is going to there in the new town and some individual endeavor is there uh, as we can see that lake town resident set up us collection center uh, and there in the below you can see uh, there's a screenshot this is a, a, a company and uh, that is they are in kolkata their office in kolkata deshopran sashmol road kolkata so this is one of the companies that they take the us from your end um, and they they are the authorized uh, dismantlers and recyclers so uh, i do not know the uh, entire details of uh, this company but uh, the scope is there the uh, the scope is there so we all need to is uh, to be aware and to uh, take the necessary steps so that our eos that is being generated um, they they can reach this authorized eos recyclers other than uh, to the informal sector so uh, we hope we have a better future uh, obviously uh, we'll do some we'll take some good steps to fight against this situation and we will have a better future obviously so thank you thank you everyone for their patience and their time they give uh, this is all from me thank you sandeepan for your nice valuable informative presentation on eos shall we start sandeepan our question answer session yes 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 
first question is asked by Joyri Dash. Suppose if some of technology made in year of 2010 that is follow a architecture and now in 2020 that technology is more efficient than that of technology in 2010. The architecture is totally defined. Then how we can reduce, reuse, recycle the older technology by less money and effort? Look, Joydeep, obviously there will be uh, advancements in technology. There is no doubt. More and more number of people, more and more number of scientists are involved um, in, uh, in the different types of advancement in the field of technology. And obviously there will be better some better product uh, to ourselves and uh, we willingly or unwillingly uh, we have to uh, accept those changes accept those devices and um, we have to reject the older ones obviously okay so like uh, in in the case of software uh, so nowadays people are using if i say windows 10 windows 8 all this software obviously you are not using Windows 95 or 97 or etc. So as with the case of hardware also, uh, uh, if if you you have to accept, you have to accept the advanced technology if needed, if needed at all. So the that is uh, that is one of the biggest question, uh, biggest point I'd like to mention that uh, sometimes uh, we are uh, since we are very much eager, curious as I mentioned earlier. Uh, to you know, as uh, we have seen uh, some advertisement in our app or newspaper or t television, uh, we uh, uh, run to the uh, shop and uh, want to buy it and show our uh, friends, colleagues that I have this latest technology, these gadgets. Now, ask yourself one question: Suppose you have a laptop, okay, obviously or desktop or mobile phone. The resources you have. Okay, the resources you have, I'm not uh, telling to you specifically, it's it's for all. The amount of resources that is, if I say it in a layman uh, manner, that is the RAM I uh, took in my machine, uh, the graphics card and uh, uh, hard disk or the SSD and all these things. Being uh, a very uh, layman user, how much of these resources are being utilized? How much of these resources are being utilized actually, actually needed for my purpose, actually needed for my studies? Are these high-end high graphics card or one terabyte storage or some solicited drives or all these high-end cutting edge technology are needed by myself to just play a game or some do some program or do some my project college project or something hardly uh, if all of us uh, ask ourselves that hardly 50 percent or less than 50 percent of all these resources are being utilized but we we, we are very much uh, we we ignore this fact what we try we try to have the latest thing as soon as the Apple 12 uh, will launch, we all, uh, probably will uh, tend to buy it right? and show our uh, colleagues and friends uh, through Instagram or Facebook that I have it. Now ask yourself, do you need that ad advanced technology for your daily life? So that is the main question. Next question, uh, um, next answer is, um, and that obviously, as I, I was mentioning, obviously we have to, move uh, to the new technology, advanced technology, if needed, and also need, need to uh, reject the uh, older ones. But I am not saying there is a, uh, this is a bad thing to reject the older ones. Okay, uh, if okay, uh, uh, this uh, product, this electronic device gets damaged, okay, you have to buy a new one and uh, reject the older one, but you have to reject in the proper way. So that that electronic waste reaches the authorized recyclers. You have to be careful as you as you have been careful while using that device. The same amount of carefulness is needed when the product gets uh, becomes wasted. 
you have to be careful in uh, also in that time okay so it does not harm the environment in in the future next question uh, onupam da yes question is asked by shubhankar mukherjee mm -hmm. assistant professor department of geology in our college in recent years we all have heard about a term replace every single mechanic uses the term replace in spite of repair which in turn escal escalate the amount of us so from consumer perspective how can we deal with those situations uh, good question shubhanka look this is uh, as i mentioned earlier that uh, there are some key holders uh, key um, uh, stakeholders that uh, are there uh, whose role is very important uh, and uh, from a company's point of view from the manufacturer's point of view they would obviously want to sell more and more products to sell and more more uh, uh, advanced technologies to the customers and uh, that's why uh, they uh, that's why probably they uh, reduce the warranty period of almost each and every product to one or two years maximum so so that's why but still uh, some companies some products they offer some extended warranty but uh, you know you cannot uh, escape from the situation because you have to have to accept uh, after all what the company or the manufacturer uh is providing to you uh, whatever their policy is you cannot escape from it but the thing is uh, uh yes uh, still um, if uh, that uh, repair is possible uh, obviously they they do not encourage you for the repair since uh, the repair uh, does not cause uh, to increase the sale of their product uh, rather it keeps in a stagnant Uh, position so obviously they do not encourage the repair so but uh, as a consumer we have to uh, encourage ourselves we have to believe that we we'll, uh, go for the repair at first if it is not possible at all or uh, um, not uh, affordable at all uh, then we have to buy the new product but again keeping in mind that uh, as soon as we are buying the new product and rejecting or throwing a, uh, throwing the uh, old product we have to do it in a proper manner so that it does not harm the environment uh, next question is asked yogi suppose my laptop or phone is broken it will cost a lot of money to repair i can buy a new phone or laptop with that money then what should i do look uh, first of all <laughs> if your laptop or phone is broken first of all as i mentioned earlier you have to take care of your product uh, since uh, no e uh, product uh, comes free of cost it needs a sufficient uh, amount of money to buy it Uh, you have to be careful about um, your product handled uh, with carefully and uh, again as i mentioned that if it takes a lot of money to repair or uh, you see that uh, the amount uh, that you uh, have to spend for the repair uh, is almost sms the price of the new product then you can uh, go for the new product there is no harm uh, but again Uh, i am mentioning that uh, as soon as you decided to reject that product you have to be as careful as you were while using the product you have to be careful uh, how i am going to reject that product uh, and uh, it must reach the authorized resellers and so on okay next akash das some of the us is neither recycle nor reuse them such as batteries damaged computer parts electronic wires and we cannot reduce the use of this product if we use rechargeable batteries then after 1 to 2 years later batteries of the recharging wire gets damaged then out of one waste product we get extra damaged products 
which increases the us more then how we manage this kind of waste uh, look akash um, that is uh, in case of batteries i mentioned earlier uh, that uh, fine uh, if you are using the rechargeable batteries for at least one or two years so uh, during this span you don't have to buy the you know the normal uh, batteries so in that way you uh, can keep the amount of us or amount of batteries used by consumed by you uh, this is the first thing uh, second thing obviously the every product has uh, has, a, has a longevity has a life span so it's not that rechargeable batteries will go on and on and on so obviously uh, the rechargeable batteries will uh, have a lifespan and after that you cannot use it then you have to throw it but again by uh, while doing so you have to be careful that it's not being uh, mixed with the normal municipal waste uh, so um, have to segregate it uh, with other waste um and in this manner uh, we we uh, can keep ourselves away from uh, consuming the regular batteries uh, um, more and more in our daily life with the use of rechargeable ones so if a rechargeable battery uh, lasts for say 2 years so during that time you don't have to buy any other battery so that's the profit not only the profit that's the profit also in terms of e waste also okay so it's it's like if you are uh, using the normal batteries uh, then say after uh, also it depends on the usage say after two or three months you have to buy uh, the batteries but in case of rechargeable battery you you have the time span of two years or say one year okay so uh, so in this manner we can uh, have to be careful about the us generated by rechargeable batteries and keep it separate from other types of waste okay next question is asked by vishwanath malakar do you think that issue of extended warranty can be seen in more seriously for example suppose i purchase one product with one year warranty and the company provide one year extended warranty with some amount if the same product comes with two year warranty then it would be beneficial for both consumer and environmental perspective yes vishwanath i fully agree with you but uh, there is um, hardly we can do about it rather um, the only thing we can do is we request the companies or the manufacturers to Uh, do these kind of things but uh, you can understand from a manufacturer's point of view that uh, uh, <laughs> this is their business policy to earn more money in in the in the name of uh, extended warranty but obviously this extended warranty this kind of facility must be there so that uh, the cu consumer uh, can have that uh, hassle free experience with the product thank you Next question is asked by Shubankar Mukherjee. You have just mentioned the term extended warranty, which is lucrative and useful indeed. But in real reality, it is just a word. After the completion of actual warranty period, you don't get any kind of complete package from the manufacturer end. Some parts are under that extended warranty. It is very much prominent in many electronic and automobile sector so how can we deal with that so called extended warranty can you give any suggestion look uh, shuvankar uh, that uh, as a consumer we are getting very intelligent uh, similarly these companies are also getting very intelligent day by day so they say to the uh, these policies in in such a way that uh, Uh, there will always be a profit uh, for them so the one thing that uh, we can do is before buying a product this is one of the uh, uh, one of the prominent uh, step that we uh, most of the time ignore uh, while buying a product uh, not only any product 
probably all kind of product. Hardly we go through the market survey, uh, market research, or at least uh, the reviews that are available in the online shopping sites. So the thing we can do uh, before going uh, into uh, before going to buy the product is to have a thorough uh, or at least a brief review, a study from uh, these product reviews. Uh, and uh, sometimes these reviews are biased, but uh, you can also go through the YouTube videos where they will show uh, you the usages, the advantages, the drawbacks, the pitfalls uh, they will discuss. Uh, and um, sometimes they are unbiased. Okay. So after going some several videos on YouTube about that product, you can have that um, uh, some picture to about about the product, and then you can decide uh, among which uh, of these brands I choose. So uh, so you are going to uh, buy a new mobile phone, and there are several companies. So you must study first. Uh, you have to select. Okay, these are the four companies or these are the four brands uh, I'll be looking for out of these say, 100 or some some 10, 20 brands. Uh, I'll go for these four brands. Now study these four brands uh, carefully. Have um, go through the YouTube videos, uh, unboxing uh, videos and uh, some uh, drawbacks and all these comments they made in the YouTube videos, different users, the reviews available in the different online uh, shopping sites. And then you judge, uh, you are the solitary judge uh, to decide which one to avail. So, so the best thing we can do is to, uh, again, also we can have uh, the detailed, uh, the detailed uh, uh, do's and don'ts and advantages and drawbacks from that company's uh, uh, website. So you are buying a Nokia phone, you visit the Nokia website and go through the product details, descriptions, and if there is any other limitations and all this. So that is the study, study the product because you are um, spending a good amount of money for uh, for your product. So uh, hardly we care about this study, okay, chalo, uh, lete hai, baat mein dekha jayega, uh, type of attitude. So, and that causes uh, some harm in the future. So uh, if we um, uh, can do this kind of studies, uh, then uh, probably, uh, we'll avoid, we can avoid this, some kinds of uh, hassles of the, in the future. Next question is asked by Shantanina. Even after reducing, reusing and recycling, we will generate some US at home. How to dispose that? Uh, good question. Uh, that uh, how to dispose that uh, as I mentioned that different authorized uh, recyclers e, uh, e, um, cyclers are there uh, they are licensed so uh, although I didn't go in detail about them but uh, as they uh, as they say that um, you just call and they will pick uh, the US from your end uh, but obviously the um, uh, there, there are some some conditions or some terms maybe there, but I think uh, this is uh, as far as I know this is free of cost that you don't have to pay anything. But uh, uh, probably and um, they will pick uh, from your end this e west and they take it away. Next, Next question. This question is asked by Pitish Doctor. Do you think durability on average of electronic devices have decreased recently? Um, look, uh, I think it may be, but again, it depends on our uh, usages. The Look, uh, uh, um, around say 10 years ago, if you have a mobile phone uh, or five years ago, the amount of time you spend behind the mobile phone with the mobile phone uh, and the amount of time we spend uh, with mobile phone nowadays you know all these apps and all these other features and uh, they attract you they push yourself to plunge yourself in into the mobile phone to spend more time with the mobile phone so uh, look uh, again uh, this is uh, some part 
uh, this is a part uh, that deals with the manufacturer or the producer, whether they are building uh, the product with the the right component with the quality quality product, uh, whether they are building the quality product, but uh, hardly we can do it with it. But again, I think obviously uh, they will not um, they do not want uh, any uh, you know the bad publicity. Uh, so the, again, it's like uh, Falogori Makotel. So different uh, types of uh, products with different qualities and different prices are there. So again, uh, if if we spend more money, we will get a good quality product. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, as a consumer, we hardly can do anything uh, to suggest or some say something to the company. Uh, we can we can uh, share our experiences, uh, uh, our experience with the e-product to the company, and uh, the company can uh, act on that in a later time. Uh, and uh, again, I'd say that it depends on the our usage, how we use that particular electronic product. Uh, some a very common uh, very common example in our daily life that. Uh, as um, as we uh, put on clothes on ourselves to protect it from uh, some rain or some dust and etc uh, so do we take the same necessary action uh, with our electronic devices such as desktop or printer or these things and do we cover them up uh, in our offices in our schools colleges etc uh, even at our home so uh, so uh, again, it depends. Uh, it has to uh, uh, do something with the care and also the kind of usage. It's uh, whether uh, again, uh, if um, uh, uh, again as a consumer, if you do not know uh, how what to buy, but uh, it's uh, your usage is heavy for a heavy load work, and you do not have that idea, you go to the pro uh, uh, shop and buy a product which is not meant for your work. Okay, so say uh, suppose I am doing some heavy movie editing work, and I say uh, I some, buy some basic uh, computer, desktop computer. So in and I try if I try to do this heavy um, tasks, so my computer uh, may not give that sufficient result, sufficient performance, and um, some maybe some damage or some kind of. Um, uh, damage may be there. So first of all, uh, we have to uh, know what is our actual demand of the product, what is our actual usage with the product, and according to uh, according with that, we can search for it. We can go through the reviews and, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the YouTube videos. Okay, okay. So as per my necessity, as per my workload, I have to buy this series of products, this particular series. Okay, you can see uh, in in the, in different advertisements that uh, say a laptop is there. So there is a different series. Say uh, you you are a, a geek a gamer. You are very much engrossed in this uh, game thing. So if you buy a normal say twenty five thousand twenty seven thousand laptop, uh, it's not going to serve your purpose fully. So for that purpose, uh, the manufacturers, they produce this high-end uh, specific um, uh, gamers laptop. So, so I have to study, uh, I have to uh, be careful about our usage and applications. Now, the last question is asked by Avrodi Panaji. Sir, do you think there is any relationship between advancement of technology and capitalism. In that respect, are policies of US management seriously hindered by vested interests of big corporation? <laughs> uh, thank you, Abhrajitda, for this question. Uh, it's, a, it's a dice question. Uh, but uh, I would like to mention that um, it is being in the rule, in the latest rule, uh, uh, not on, not in the latest rule, but also it is. It was there in the uh, amendment in the to, made in the 2016, uh, and also there is an amendment uh, in 2018 that uh, the companies 
that the manufacturers they are producing those who are producing these e products they have to take the some amount of liability some amount, some amount of responsibility for their e products uh, and uh, the collection of the the e products the recycling of e products they have to uh, built uh, their own dismantling or recycling facilities and uh, slowly you know, the government is putting all these restrictions all these laws into effect and uh, in in another term the company is also uh, uh, seeing the benefit uh, because uh, producing a product from scratch uh, is very costly than uh, from the authorized recycling uh materials so from company's perspective uh not only this generates some employment but also uh it reduces the manufacturing cost of the product so i think um uh, uh by uh, time the government will impose more and more uh stringent rules and also the companies will already realize that uh, this um, recycling uh, facility is good for them and uh, some of them have already built uh, their own recycling um, uh, plants and uh, if you go through uh, their website or uh, the product details uh, they even um, uh, welcome you uh, to deposit the us of their product uh, us Uh, to them they welcome you so i think uh, uh, not only it's a matter of uh, environment but also from company's perspective uh, it's a uh, 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 profitable situation profitable aspect uh, so they would not deny it completely i hope uh, i can answer all the questions with my limited knowledge uh, so thank you thank you uh, my colleagues uh, shumit da anupam da and others uh, who are par- participant in this uh, webinar and thank you other participants who are outside from this college and also the students of this college uh, so um, again i i would request everyone uh, that uh, it's it's not a uh, just a webinar try to uh, make awareness of this us to your neighbors to your colleagues to your re- relatives uh, to your friends uh, to all of them because uh, if you see closely again this still remains and um, it's under highlighted area okay thank you anupam da thank you sundeepon for your thank you sundeepon for your valuable lecture you have enlightened all the aspect of the uh, us management and i hope all the participants will uh, learn a lot from this and they will follow the uh, us management in their daily life and uh, thank you once again sundeepon for your valuable lecture and i am also thanks all to all the participants and i'll like to also give the thanks to the uh, principal sir of government engineer degree college singur as well as uh, iqsc coordinator dr choitali choudhury and all the colleagues and of the uh, government engineer degree college singur thank you very much and this is the sh- uh, session that is the completed this session is now completed and i who like to also like to um, uh, say that this is the first lecture of this lecture series and the second and third lecture will also be held and uh, later on we will inform about this lecture date and time of this lecture and i hope all you of all of you again participate in that lecture series thank you very much thank you from to all of you from the uh, department of computer science that's end of this session